Hi, we're going to look at a concept called the event loop in Visual Basic. So an event is something that happens while you're running your program, uh, internal to the program. So for example, or I should say internal to Excel. So like opening the workbook, um, clicking a command button, typing in a text box, clicking um, an option box, or anything like that. Some event that takes place in Excel or in your user form um, while the program is running. Now, what happens in your program is if you've written code to deal with an event, then that code gets executed when the event occurs. And if you haven't, uh, VBA just ignores the event. But the question here is, um, how does it pick up on when an event happens? And a nice way to think about it is as an event loop. So while you're running your program, even if the code is just sitting there, or your user form or your spreadsheet is just sitting there, if your macro is running, then it's constantly checking for new events. And you can think of this as a do-while true loop that just keeps running until some event happens that makes the program stop. So it's constantly looking for events and seeing if it has code for them. And you don't have to write this loop, it's just there. And so what we're going to do is look at an illustration of this. And this is a version of the ice cream store that uses the event loop. It can be run over and over. And what it does is it not only creates a receipt, but it writes on a spreadsheet as well. And it uses some global variables to track statistics over multiple sales. So let's take a look. Okay, so I'm going to open it here. And here's my form. So let's get started and I'll buy, say, three scoops of chocolate with hot fudge and whipped cream and a spoon. Here's my receipt. Okay, another one. Um, take two scoops of vanilla with whipped cream and sprinkles and no spoon. Another receipt and one more. Um, let's do two scoops again of strawberry with just sprinkles and with a spoon. Okay, so um, I'm going to close this. Now let's go take a look at Excel. And here's my spreadsheet. So you see that I've made an entry for each order. I've numbered the orders. I've recorded how many scoops and the flavor, the food total, whether or not a spoon was bought, the order total. And then over here, I'm getting a cumulative record of the number of scoops and also of how much total money I've taken in up to that point. All right, so how did I do that? Uh, Let's not save. Oh, sorry. Let's open that up again. And let's go right to the code. And you'll see that even before I've run an order, I have the headings put on, on the spreadsheet. All right, so let's look at the code for this. So I'll go to Developer and Visual Basic. And here's my code. So first of all, I've added some extra constants here. Uh, so here's my prices from before. And I've also added constants for the numbers of the columns on the spreadsheet where I want different kinds of information to go. Now this might seem a little bit like overkill. Why, why didn't I just use the numbers? Well, the reason is simple. If I ever want to change what column a certain thing goes in, so I want to add another column or something, it's so much easier if I'm doing it this way because I only have to change things in this one place. And then, of course, insert the code to put the new stuff in. But I don't have to go through and keep remembering, oh, this number means this column, that number means that column. So in general, whenever possible, you avoid explicit numbers and use constants instead. I've also added a few global variables here, and we'll see how those are used but I want to keep track of the total number of scoops that are being bought, uh, the total number of sales, um, the amount I've taken in, and what row 
I'm going to write in on the spreadsheet as I process each order. So here's my initialized form, and remember, this gets run when the form first gets set up. And I have my captions for the option buttons as before, for the check boxes, for the labels. And I'm also setting the global variables to zero to get them started. And in addition, I'm putting, here's where I'm putting the headings in my sheet. So first of all, I make sure that sheet one is the active sheet by saying sheet one activate. And then I write, here are the headings I've written, one for each column. I skip column seven, and I put headings for the columns where I'm going to be recording the totals. And then what this command does is it fixes the columns so that they're the right width for the context. Um, the biggest element that's in that column will, will just exactly fit. So that makes my spreadsheet look much neater than if there's things that don't quite show up because they're too wide for the column. Okay. Now, my code for ordering the ice cream and printing the receipt is the same as before. Um, up until print receipt, I, I didn't change anything. But then I also have a new procedure that will update the global variables and write on the spreadsheet. And it has four arguments, the number of scoops, the total cost, the flavor name, and the food cost. So let's go take a look at how that works. All right, so down here, here it is. And the first thing I do is add the number of scoops from the current order to the total scoops and the total cost of the current order to the total receipts. Then I want to increase uh, my number of sales by one. And the place where I'm going to write is uh, that number plus two because I'm allowing for the header row and a blank row. Okay, and now I'm just filling in the values here. So in the order number cap column, I put the number of sales, which that's the same as the order number. I then put in the flavor name, the number of scoops, and the cost of the food, those in their appropriate columns. Uh, to record if a spoon was ordered or not, I put yes or no by using the value of the check spoon checkbox. And finally, I'm going to record the... Um, the total cost of that particular order, then the value of um, the, to the total number of scoops that have been bought, and the total amount that I've taken in, my total receipts so far. Okay, and then finally I once again adjust the columns in case it happens that something was wider than anything that was in the column so far. Alright, so that's how the code works. Now notice what it does not in here. Nowhere in here do you ex are you going to find an explicit do, while, true, or anything like that. You don't see the event loop. But it's happening behind the scenes. And as, again, as long as the program is running, I can do things over and over again. So let's try that one more time here. I'm going to run my macro. And so 3, 3. Scoops of chocolate with whipped cream and a spoon. And here you see the order. Order number one, it's chocolate, three scoops. Here's my food total. I did buy a spoon. Here's my order total. And let's just do one more. So two, strawberry with everything, no spoon. And there it is. And I can keep going as long as I want. Also, um, now suppose I wanted to know something else, like, say, how many spoons I sold. Well, if you remember back when we looked at conditional statements in Excel, I can use a COUNTIF um, com formula on this spoon column, count the yeses, to find out how many spoons I sold. I can also find out how many chocolates, etc. Uh, if I want to do more detailed statistics, I can write um, a special macro to analyze this, or I can use a pivot table. And we'll learn about pivot tables in the next couple weeks. That's another useful tool to analyze uh, a set of data like this. So have fun with this and try it. Play around with it. Make sure you understand how the code works.